Hey guys, it's Adam E.K. Swimming Bird, and this is The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Now, I was extremely fortunate to be one of the first in the world to try out the Nintendo Switch version at the New York City event, and I have to start by saying thank you. Thank you to everybody watching, because if you weren't out there, I would not be there playing. I would not have been invited, so thank you so much, everybody who has been with me or, you know, just jumping on board watching the channel. Now, I have to say thanks to Nintendo as well. They were very kind to provide travel and accommodations for Danielle, my girlfriend, and I to fly to New York and play a bunch of Switch games early. I posted some Splatoon 2 footage, if you didn't see that, but we also got to play ARMS, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, 1-2 Switch, but of course, Zelda, one of my favorite series. I was so excited to play this. And you're going to see a bunch of different clips, kind of a grab bag, from the two types of demos, and we'll finish up with the trailer that was shown at the Switch event. So, the first demo here, the one I'm playing right now, might look familiar if you've watched the E3 coverage of Breath of the Wild. This is the Great Plateau starting area of the game. You start right as the game begins, and we had 20 minutes to run around and do whatever we want in this area, and then a screen would pop up and said, thanks for playing, and I was trying to throw a rock at a Korok, not to hurt it or anything, just to see what would happen, like throwing rocks at the kids in, in Twilight Princess, but... They, uh, I got cut off. You'll see that in just a second. Now, the second type of demo was controlled by a Nintendo demonstrator, and these were little five-minute segments where you got to see stuff like jumping on a horse and going to fight a guardian with three hearts and getting destroyed, and uh, I've got a clip of that coming up, and also stuff like getting a horse, taming it, and going to a stable, which is new stuff, and I've got a lot of info to share with you guys. But first, I want to start with my impressions and thoughts about the game with what I played. So graphically, the Switch version does feel like a big step up over the Wii U version, but that one still looks great. And this one is more detailed, though, in lots of little ways. It's a lot less cartoon shaded looking when you compare the two, and the draw distance definitely seems to be a bit better with the details farther off. Like if you look at Death Mountain, you can see the glow of the lava better. You can definitely see a lot of the fine things like grass and plants and animals clearer on the Switch version. And the demo did run pretty smooth. I saw some people say that there was a bit of frame rate drop at times, and this is probably due to this Switch demo likely being just a very direct port of the Wii U demo from E3. It's got the old UI and control icons and stuff, and likely, you know, it's going to adapt and change to the controller type that you're playing with in the final version. Here's me at the edge of the Great Plateau longing to go grab a horse and, and tame it and uh, the controls. So this was a sticking point for me, and hopefully there are options to switch. Of course, in the demo, you know, you're limited to what you play. I did play on the Pro Controller, and then you'll see a little later, I do grab the portable mode from the Switch, you know, pull it right out of the base and continue playing. Now here is something that I didn't like about the controls. The B button is the run button, but the X button is the jump button. I tried to get to those chests and found out that you don't want to go in mud as Link, because you'll drown. But yeah, trying to run with B, as well as adjust the camera with the right stick, and then hit X to jump, I had to use my pointer finger to try to, like, you know, claw up there and hit that. So I'm hoping there's more options that allow you to run and jump a little more easily. You can see it kind of slowed down a little bit there in the forest here as I'm going off to hunt boars. But for the most part, it ran really smooth for such a very open world. And the camera controls, you know, they work all right. The right stick moves it around, and you can lock on, just like in most Zeldas, to center it. I tried to throw an axe at a boar, and there's uh, a lot to do at once, though, so it does feel very busy. Here's me pulling that out and just trying to, uh, to play the portable mode, and it switches very easily. There's little locks and stuff on the Switch so that you can't steal it, obviously, so it was a little weird trying to get it back into the dock, but it does switch right over. It's pretty quick to identify that it's going into portable mode or going back on the TV screen. Now, horses. I want to talk about the horses because we're going to have some clips here. Lots of new stuff. This is something I was very interested in, how to tame a horse. You have to sneak up on it and calm it down. And, you know, you jump on its back. And uh, as you kind of pet it, there's like a soothe button. You hit L to soothe and you can bond with your horse and you'll see little hearts. And you want to, you know, the horses are smart. They're not going to listen to you unless you are friends with them and they like you. You can pull the left stick back to, you know, whoa, it says whoa as the icon, but it's to kind of stop. You can hit A to, yeah, you know, boost. And different horses have different stats. There's a lot of complexity to this, I didn't realize. It's not just Epona, the invincible tank horse. We have uh, horse stats like strength, stamina, 
and speed, and there's up to five stars for each, so I'm thinking that there's going to be some rare horses. Here's me trying to put it back in there, and I get it in there pretty easily. And then uh, it switches back as I'm blindsided by a Bokoblin grabbing the Pro Controller. Uh, but yeah, so the horses have different stats. There's going to be rarer horses, like there was a quest that was shown during the Treehouse event that this white horse that's like a royal horse that you need to get. That was me trying to throw the rock at the Bokoblin. And here's a uh, Nintendo demonstrator showing why you don't want to take on the Guardians that rove around early on. Uh, horses also have temperaments, like they could be gentle, and the wilder ones are probably better statted at, you know, they've got better skills and things. And the bond is a meter out of 100, so the more you soothe the horse as you ride it, the more your bond is going to be. And uh, there's also different boosts, like you can see this horse only has two boosts, unlike Epona, who usually has six carrots or six little riding crops or whatever. So you want to find a horse that has better stats, but... It is, uh, you know, it's the horse that you want to use. You don't necessarily have to stick to one horse or throw a horse away because you can register them in a stable, and I'll get into that in a second, but the better bonded you are with your horse, it's interesting, they will stay on paths for you when you're riding around, so if you want to look around or fight stuff a little easier, your horse can kind of stay on the path as you're galloping, and uh, there are crazy, like, blue horses and stuff you might glimpse on one of the other screens there. Uh, lots of cool patterns and different temperaments and stuff. And they all have great animations. I notice there's lots of sounds that really sync up well with the trot, and they'll have the little lip movements. It makes you want to feed them an apple, which you can do. You can feed apples and things to horses, as well as the dogs in the game. And they will join you. They'll be your companions, it seems. They'll, they'll follow you around. And there is a button to whistle for your horse, but it also says whistle for companions. There's the blue one over there on that second screen. Uh, but yeah... So there are definitely going to be other companions outside of horses and Wolf Link on the amiibo. Here's Daniel falling in love with a topless Link. <laughs> Can't say it any different. Okay, uh, but yeah, so it's interesting that we're getting other, you know, animal friends or maybe character companions because there's a lot of characters featured in the trailers. And uh, so yeah, your horses, though, I just learned this from the Treehouse stream as well. They can die and your companions can die, so be very careful with your beloved horse. Now the stable, there's stables all over the land. It has this giant horse head on top of it, so you can't miss it. And what looks like wooden little llama cutouts. Now I'm thinking that we're gonna have other animals that we can ride and tame because there's a donkey in one of the stables I, I spotted. And also, you know, there's cutouts of llama looking things. Maybe there's animals that work better on mountains or work better in different areas. And you can rest at the stable like an inn or register up to five horses. So that's why I think there might be more types of animals, because you get five different slots there. There's definitely a lot of wildlife. In our one demo that we got shown the stable, the presenter ran over a heron as she was riding her horse. She just, you know, trotted over it and crushed it with her horse. So that was kind of foreboding for my channel, I guess. No, <laughs> my logo. And, um... Uh, if you want to register a horse, it's 20 rupees. You get a locally made saddle and bridle, and they say you help support con conservation efforts. Now, the uh, registered horses, they're accessible at any of the stables, and if you leave your horse out, it will go back to the stable, and then you can pick it up again and, you know, whistle for it. But they're not magic. They won't pop up out of nowhere like Epona. And that's what I think the amiibo, the Link Rider amiibo, might be used for to try to have a horse pop up when you need one. When you name a horse, it's only nine characters max, so... No Grandpa's Sunday Paper, one of those, you know, racehorse names that I normally would use. And, uh, yeah, the, uh, the horse, it, it has to be bonded with you to a bit, but then you, as long as it's around the stable, you can register it. I just think it's going to be awesome doing all this horseback stuff. You get a good bond, you can ride around, do these crazy Princess Mononoke battles where you're fighting the guardians and shooting arrows and doing stuff while the horse is using that AI to avoid trees and gallop around. Much better than the old Zelda games, I think it's going to be. Now, uh... The traveling merchants that move around, you find those at stables and stuff. They're roving NPCs. I think they're based on time, because there's a big time and weather element to this. And looks like seasons. It reminds me of Majora's Mask with people moving around. We saw Beetle in some footage. He has a big Beetle pack, like the bug, but Beetle from Wind Waker and, and Skyward Sword. He's back. The glider, I noticed, it has stamina. And, uh, you know, that was pretty apparent. But you can only fly for so long, but you can feather your fall to avoid damage, which is good. But... I asked our presenter about that. Daniel was trying to throw a, uh, a sword at a bird, but she missed. I asked our presenter, and they said, you know, we sh got to see Link falling from pretty high up, and he did survive pretty well. He's 
pretty good at landing and didn't take too much damage, but he can die pretty easily, especially early on if you try to tackle those guardians, as you saw. And the stamina, it seems to run out rather quickly. I'm hoping that outside of potions and food to make it run, you know, go longer when you're running, I hope there's ways to, uh, to level it up more permanently so you can climb higher. That could be a good way to gate certain areas, like rewards that you might have to climb to high areas to get. You can collect food, of course, and without hearts, foraging and hunting is pretty key to, to stay alive, and potions help a lot with stuff like that. We saw in the trailer there's like a potion shop in a village that might be Kakariko Village in this game, and uh, collecting stuff is likely one of the only ways to get rupees, because you don't really find rupees and hearts out in the world, and you need them for goods and services, so I think it's, it's going to be more valuable to have rupees in this game than in most of the others. Now, the weapon variety, she's got a pitchfork on her bat back here and a pot lid for a shield. There is great weapon variety, even early on in the plateau, and the weapons break over time, so they encourage you to swap them out for different situations. I heard one of the presenters talk about how it's, if it's raining, metal weapons and items will make you a lightning rod and the enemies as well, so you can get struck by lightning. We saw a mop, which was like a spear weapon, and a garden hoe to, to you know, things you can use that the Bokoblins have. And the Bokoblins seem like they got a lot of personality. A lot of the enemies have great personality in this game. They're very evocative, you know, they've got a lot of expression to them. And I really enjoyed the dynamic battle music. It made the fights a lot more fun and not as brooding. In past games, the battle music could be kind of like stressful, something you wouldn't want to listen to outside of the game, most likely. But this, you know, it's much more enjoyable musically in this game with the uh, dynamic battle music because it seems like it adds in these like pleasant notes when you land hits. It makes you feel good about beating up stuff and winning, so it's like triumphant as you land those hits. I really liked that. The composer worked on the Animal Crossing games, like New Leaf and City Folk, I believe, so it got a lot of peaceful music experience, but definitely the, the theme that's you know heard in this trailer is very exciting and triumphant. I'll put a link in the description if you want to hear this and the new voice acting, which is still so weird to get used to, but I'm enjoying it so far. We get to see a bit of Zelda a little more clearly as well in this trailer. And, you know, different stuff like her wearing the same shirt as Link and all these other races popping up makes me think that they're going to be companions or maybe, you know, Zelda might even be playable because she has her own Sheikah slate on the amiibo that just got revealed at this event as well. So I'm, uh, I'm thinking, you know, there was those comments about how there couldn't be a female playable Link because Link is this character and that they would want Zelda to be playable if they're going to use a female character for something. So I'm, I'm going to guess that she'll at least join us for some portion of the game. But the trailer here, you get to see a lot of races. There's Gorons, Zoras, Koroks, the Rito bird, the Gerudo, the Deku tree pops up. There's like a maned walrus thing, which is probably more of an animal. But you can see here, look, he's like, he's being pulled by that maned walrus that's awesome looking. You get to see it a little... There's some time around here when the Gerudo girl pops up, you're standing next to one with her, and I think that's going to be how you get around the desert areas. You, like, surf when one is pulling you using that surfing system on the shield. There's a nice village that could be Kakariko. It has that potion shop I mentioned. Lots of ruins. It definitely feels like all the timelines are converging on this game because we have all these different races from se separate timelines. And you'll see glimpses of these giant things that look like huge guardians. There's four of them, and they were all... There's one. They were all on this map that was revealed from the collector's edition of the game. And I think those are going to be the four big bosses. There's another. And, uh, yeah, before Calamity Ganon, I think we'll have to take those down, because they seem just like the little guardians, kind of corrupted and evil. There's some crazy shots of them destroying what is probably Hyrule Castle Town. And there was a shot of the flower. There's those walrus things. They're cool looking. They look like Red 13 from Final Fantasy VII or something. Uh, so the flowers, this was mentioned that they are very important. Those white flowers, I love that Goron design. And Breath of the Wild, I didn't think about this. Baby's Breath is a type of flower. And Breath of the Wild might not be referring to the open air atmosphere so much. And maybe it's directly referring to a type of flower. So we'll have to see what that flower is all about. We are right at the end here, though. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, you can post them in the comments, and I'll try to get to all of them, or, you know, ask me on Twitter at Swimbird941 if you want to talk more directly. I'll put some links in the description for you. Please leave a like if you enjoyed this. Maybe subscribe if you haven't, and I will be playing The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild on March 3rd when it launches for the Switch. 
But until then, please check out the rest of the videos. I mentioned I have some Splatoon 2 footage and thoughts, lots of thoughts on that game as well that I posted recently. And that is it. Thank you guys again so much. Goodbye.